I welcome you to this video lecture series on quantum mechanics. In the last lecture, we have discussed about vector spaces. Specifically, we discuss about what is basis. A basis which can span the vector space. I can represent any vector from vector space, let's say vector A, using a set of basis vectors as a1, A1 plus A2, A2 plus one and so forth. So I have a set of basis as all AI. This can also be written as A is equal to sum over all I AI ER. And then we discuss that okay, since so we can represent this as vector space, I can represent this vector A as a series of coefficients. I can represent this vector A as a series of coefficients A1, A2, A3, so on and so forth. In in case of vector spaces, a vector A is represented by a column matrix, something like A1, A2, A3, up to AN. We will be discussing more about this representation of vector in terms of column matrices. For the time being, let's focus on our next topic. Our next topic is, it is known as Taylor product. So, in our Euclidean space, we define vector product there are two types of vector products. One is known as dot product and one is known as cross product. The cross product cannot be extended in vector spaces, but the dot product can be extended for vector spaces. So in our Euclidean space, we write A dot B. So if I have two vectors and if I take a dot product of these two vectors, I get one Taylor number. Similarly, in case of vector spaces, This particular dot product is known as Taylor product or inner product. So, what is this inner product? So, basically, I take two vectors, so let's say vector A and I take another vector, let's say I took another vector vector B from a vector space, then this inner product, I perform some operation on A and B and that operation gives me some scalar quantity. This scalar quantity in general could be a complex number. What kind of operation I am performing over here? It could be simple multiplication, it could be anything. It depends on what kind of vector space I do have. Importantly, this particular operation gives us a scalar quantity. One can obviously define this operation separately. Instead of representing something like this, I am going to represent this scalar product as something like this. This is A, this is B. This is known as bra kit notation so this a is known as bra and this b is known as kit b what is bra and kit we will be discussing in a more detail but for the time being just focus that these are two vectors a and b and i'm taking the inner product the inner product is represented something like this and this will in general give me a complex number 
Now since it is the analogy of our gas product in Euclidean space, so it should satisfy all the properties of our dot product. What are the properties of dot product? The properties are something like this. If I take A into B, it should give me B into A. This is for Euclidean space. Then the second property is that and this will be equal to some number scalar S scalar quantity. The second property is that if I take a dot product of A with A itself, this will be a positive number and it will be greater than or equal to zero and it will be zero if and only if a is equal to zero correct and the next property is that if i do something like this a dot let's say b b plus c C, then this will be equal to B times A dot B plus C times A dot C. Let's look at this in terms of our vector space. So, whether the, what are the properties of this inner product? Properties of inner product is something like this. A, if I take inner product of A into B, and if I switch vector A and B, so something like this, B, inner product with A, then I need to take a complex conjugate of type This is because in case of Euclidean space, what are scalar we are getting? That scalar is a real number. But in case of inner product, in general, the number is complex number. So if I change the order of A B, it should give me the complex conjugate of that particular number. That's the first thing. So this is symmetric operation. This is anti-symmetric operation. If I take inner product of A with A itself, it is greater than or equal to 0 and it will be equal to 0 if and only if A is equal to 0. If and only if A is equal to 0. And the third property of inner product is that if I take the inner product of A with let's say b multiplied by b plus c multiplied by c it will be equal to b times inner product of a with b plus c times inner product of a with c kindly note the order and multiplying a i am taking a as my bra so everywhere a is bra I am taking B and C as gates, so everywhere B and C are gates only. Now, what will happen if I do something like this? Instead of having, let's say I have something like this. I have a scalar A and a bra A plus scalar B bra B ah, sorry it has to be bra bra B and I am taking the inner product with respect to let's say K C what is going to be it will be A A times 
ब्राउस करके यहाँ केट बी प्लस बी ए टाइम्स केट सी इज इट गोइंग टू बी समथिंग लाइक दैट नो इट हैज टू बी अ कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेट सो इवन इफ यू आर टेकिंग अ केलर आउट ऑफ अ ब्रा विल यू टेक आउट इट हैज टू बी द कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेट ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर केलर नंबर When we take examples, it will be clear to you. For the time being, this is the property. So whatever you are taking out of bras, so whatever you are taking out of bras, it will be a complex conjugate. And whatever you are taking out of cake, it will be normal scalar. In general, as we discussed previously, in general, our scalar product will be. A complex number, and is and this particular inner product is entropy matrix. Simple, so it is similar to our dot product. But what are these bras and cakes? We are going to represent a vector in a vector space and a column matrix. Let's say a one, a two, a three, and so on and so forth. Right. We just discuss this particular thing. Now, if I take an inner product of B with respect to A, and this bra B is also a column vector, what I'm going to get? I'm going to get something like this: B1, B2, B3 multiplied by A1, A2, A3. Right. So this is the same. Three by one matrix. This is also a three by one matrix. Does the dot product exist between these two matrices? No, it does not exist. So we have a problem now. In order to solve this particular problem, we use what is known as dual space. What is dual space? <laughs> so it is said that for every vector space, there exists a dual space. Which, with all the elements same, the only difference is that the vector in real uh, actual vector space is represented by a cat vector. So this is vector in vector space. On the other hand, a vector in dual space will be represented by bra. So these are the vectors. In dual space, so there are two spaces. One is known as vector space, and another is known as the dual space of that particular vector space. The vector in vector space is represented by K, and the vector in dual space is represented by R. Now, as we have seen previously, that This bra is actually adjoint of K, so this bra is adjoint of K. So when I take a inner product of a bra with a K, then if I represent a bra as a column matrix. Let's say a one, a two, a three. Let's say this is bra a, so we take a. Then bra a will be equal to adjoint, which is equal to complex conjugate of the transpose a one, a two, a three. And now, if I take the inner product of a into a, this will be the inner product of a matrix which is equal to one by three dotted with inner product of another matrix which is three into one, and this will be a scalar number. So please remember that. These bras exist in dual space. 
So there are all the vectors which are in real space. There exists a corresponding vector in the real space. And if I say that V is my vector space, then there exists a V tilde, which is real space. And it belongs to vector space and bra belongs to the dual space. We are going to discuss this particular thing using some problems, but before that, let me discuss some of the properties related to this inner product. The correlated property we are going to discuss about this is the norm for vector. So in Euclidean space, if I do something like this, if I take the inner product of A with A itself, and if I take the root of that, this is known as the length of a vector A. Similarly, in case of vector space, if I do something like this, take the inner product of vector A with itself and take under root of this, this is known as norm of vector and if norm of vector a is equal to 1 so it said that the vector is normalized it's even if the vector is not normalized we can divide the whole vector by its norm whatever norm i'm going to get and we can normalize that particular vector so it's very easy to normalize any vector then there also exists what is known as triangular inequality so in case of including tri triangle inequality In case of Euclidean vectors, the triangle equality is something like this. A plus B, length of A plus B will always be less than or equal to length of A plus length of B. The same thing applies to vector space as well. With vector space as well, the norm of a plus b will always be less than or equal to norm of vector a plus norm of vector b. Similarly, in case of dot product of two vectors, we say that if I take dot product of vector a with b, then this is equal to mod a mod b cos theta. And this will be a scalar number a dot b and a b or a into b a is also scalar number b is also scalar number cos theta so i can write something like this modulus of a dot modulus of b is equal to mod a mod b cos theta and we as we know that cos theta can vary from 0 to 1 we can say that modulus of a dot modulus of b will be less than or equal to a into b right? and then it will be equal it will be equal if theta is equal to zero what we what do you mean by theta is equal to zero theta is zero means a and b are parallel to each other so this is the triangle inequality for equilibrium space and this is equal when A is parallel to B. Similar thing exists in vector spaces as well, which is known as cauchy short inequality. Okay. And it said that the norm of A dot B is less than or equal to norm of A dot norm of B. And this is equal if and only if A and B are 
collinear. What do I mean by collinear? It means that A can be represented as linear combination of B. So, if you want to enter the trick here, if you want to find out whether two vectors uh, uh, a set, uh, vector from a set of vectors is linearly independent or not, you just take the inner product of A. Uh, you just find the norm of A dot B. And if this is equal to norm of A times norm of B, then they are linearly dependent. dependent vector and if not they are linearly independent vector we just discuss about normalized vector we said that if norm of a is equal to one it is called as normalized similarly in case of our Euclidean space, we say that if A dot B is equal to 0, then the vectors are perpendicular to each other. In case of vector space, we say that if A dot B, A method of B is equal to 0, then Vector A and vector B are orthogonal. And if norm of vector A is equal to 1 and norm of vector B is equal to 1 and a dot B is equal to 0, they are known as ortho normal vector. So, if I have a set of orthonormal vectors, then I will have AI dot bj is equal to delta ij where delta ij is a derived delta function delta ij is equal to 1 if i is equal to j otherwise it is 0 so it will give me 1 if and only if i have something like this a1 b1 this will be equal to 1 if i have something like this a1 b2 it will be equal to 0 now suppose I have chosen a set of orthonormal vectors. This is vector, let's say EI. Right? That time the inner product of EI with EJ is delta IJ. Right? And if I represent my vector using such a basis set which is orthonormal so this basis set is orthonormal orthonormal if you say then any vector a i can represent using a1 e1 plus a2 e2 plus one and so forth and a vector b i can represent as D1, D1 plus D2, D2 plus 1 and so forth. D1 
then the inner product of A and B will, will be equal to A1 star B1 plus A2 star B2 and so on and so forth. Since they are orthonormal and I am going to get EI dot EJ is equal to delta IJ. So all the cross terms will be equal to zero and I'm going to just I can find out the inner product by the components. This is what we do in our equilibrium space. If I want to take A dot B, this will be equal to you see that this will be equal to A1 B1 plus A2 B2 plus A3. B3 where A1, A2, A3 are the components of A, B1, B2, B3 are components of B. Isn't it? So it's very similar, but you require this condition to be satisfied. That is the basis that we are going to talk about, they are orthonormal basis. Now suppose I have a vector A and I want to find out what is the component let's say I component in terms of EI basis and I find it out. So I have vector A in general, I have vector A in vector Z and I want to find out what are the components, I components of this particular vector in terms of this orthonormal basis EI. In order to find out the vector component, what I need to do, let's suppose I can represent this vector A in terms of this orthonormal basis as k1 p1 plus a2 p2 plus a3 e3 plus so on and so forth okay. and i want to find out the i component so if i multiply it with bra ei what I'm going to get is it is A1 times EI E1 plus so on and so forth plus AI times EI EI plus so on and so forth. Correct? Now, since this, this is vector is orthonormal, this EI times E1, this is going to be equal to 0, all other components are going to be 0, however, this EI dot EI will be equal to 1, and all else will be equal to 0, so what I am going to get is, EI times A, this is I, will be equal to EI, okay. but I know I don't know whether this component is in which basis set right in order to simplify this particular thing in order to find a component of vector a along ei we multiply vector a by a quantity kate ei bra ei and this gives me projection of a along E i. How? It will simply be something like this. If I do, let's say E i multiplied by E i multiplied by A, this will be equal to this product. As we have seen, this product will give you A i. So that will be A i E 1. Now we know that. 
So we know that this AI is a component in this particular basis along this particular direction or this particular business sector. So this is known as the projection operator. Now if I perform this projection operation operator over all EI, what I'm going to get? So if I do something like this, I EI EI on A, what I'm going to get? I'm going to get E1 E1 plus E2 E2 plus E3 E3 so on and so forth. You know First, I is equal to 1, 1, 1, A, so that will give me A1, E1, 2, 2, I is equal to 2, so this will be 2, 2, so that will give me A2, E2, if I is equal to 3, that will give me E3, 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 E3 and so on so forth, so this will give me something like this, A1, E1, plus A2, E2, plus so on and so forth, so basically, this will give me, the same vector A. Right? And we will discuss this in more detail in coming day. The person. Let's go back a little bit. We say that okay, this particular thing gives me the projection of the vector. Isn't it what we do in our equilibrium case? Suppose I have a vector A. And I want to find out what is its ith component. What do you do? Ith component. What, is, what do I mean by ith component? Ith component means what is the projection of vector A along i direction. So what do you do? You just take a dot product of i with A and it will give me A1, the ith component. The same thing I am doing over here, but here we know that this A1 is along I con I direction. That's why I did not say that I plot something like this. I did not say this, huh? but here I don't know. That's why I need to specify along which basis system direction it is, and that's why I need to take this particular thing. Huh? Now, this complex looking thing which is Let's say bra, circuit into bra. What does will this will give me? What this is? Since k is a column vector, it will be having one row. I'm oh sorry, one column and many rows. So this will be n into one, and this will be one into n. So what will be this? The product of k with bra. This will give me a matrix with dimension n into n. Right? Please note that in vector spaces, this particular quantity, something like this, is known as operator. And all operators, if I'm going to represent bra, uh, vectors in terms of in some particular basis as some column, uh, column matrices, then the operator in the given basis will be represented by a square matrix. This particular thing that we have discussed EI, EI, this is known as projection operator. It projects what is the com I component of the vector in EI basis sets. Okay. And if I do again this particular thing, so if I do the projection operation one more time, it will again give me the projection operator vector in. It is uh, something like this. Suppose I find out 
I have a vector a and I find out what is its x component and then again I find out what is its x component. Will it give me the same thing? Yes, it will give me the same thing. So, this projection operator is something like this and the property of projection operator is that this square is equal to pn and if I take this summation pi pi this is known as unitary operator what is the importance of this unitary operator it transforms the vector in the i basis is it clear to you is it clear to you let's take an example suppose i have a vector a and i don't know in which this form it is right and if i so the, uh, there is some vector so, so let's take a two by two matrix let's say three four by 1 and I'm going to take the orthogonal basis let's say e1 is equal to 1 0 0 0 e2 is equal to 0 1 0 0 e3 is equal to 0 0 1 0 and e4 is equal to these are all basis vectors Zero 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 one. Hmm? Now I want to find out what is uh, I want to transform this particular vector A in terms of this basis set. So how can I do that? I need to write something like this. E I E I A. So that will give me e1 e1 a e2 e2 a plus e3 e3 a plus E4 E4 A so that would be equal to 0 3 4 5 1 plus and so forth. So what will it give me? It will give me 1 0 0 0 into Plus similarly it will give me four times zero one zero zero plus five times zero zero one zero plus one times zero 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 one. So basically this is nothing but a one e one plus a two e two plus a three e3 plus e4 e4 this is nothing but a matrix but now it is in represented in the audit so this particular thing Transform the vector in EI basis. The vector spaces in which this scalar product is defined are known as scalar product vector space. 